What the heck is his hair doing? Oh my god, is his hair talking to us? What is up everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Sword and Shield. Welcome back to Winden Stadium as today we've got the finale of the Galarian Star Tournament and I guess of Sword and Shield for now because this is of course the end of the Crown Tundra DLC and as of now we don't really have any announcements for future DLC in Sword and Shield so this could very well be the end of the series. If you guys have enjoyed this journey make sure to hit that like button as I do have another throwback team for y'all that I'm going to keep a secret until we actually get back into the star tournament because I have now got a victory with every single one of these fools except for Pierre's. So as I've been saying, you need 15 victories to unlock those last two mystery characters. Now, you could choose to battle with each and every one of them as I have done, or just do all 15 battles with the same person. But I mean, what's the fun in that? So I've got one victory with each of them except for Pierre's. We're gonna go ahead and pick him as our partner for today and head into the locker room one last time as it looks like we've got Leon and Hop to kick things off. What kind of start is that? We're going to knock out the best two right from the beginning? Wanted to pair up with someone like me. I won't pretend like I know what you're up to. Dynamaxing my Pokemon still off the table, but I'll do whatever else I can in this battle. Okay. Sticking to his ideals there. No Dynamaxing for Pierre's. Which definitely means I'ma steal the spotlight in terms of Dynamaxing here. It's Orange and Piers versus Leon and Hop. The brothers duo in the first round. Starting to look like a rock star, aren't you? Show me how much you've grown. Of course, mate. I'm always growing. Hope you're ready to be blown away, Piers. I hope you guys are ready to be blown away by this team that I've got prepared today. Because it is one final throwback, like I said. A little bit of... Nostalgia for the older fans and I mean way older at this point like at the time I did these playthroughs or well depends on which one we're talking exactly but Seaman is out here from heart gold and soul silver come on hop our bond as brothers is way stronger than any champion I know orange better than anybody okay we know we know and we know exactly what these dudes are about to have on their teams too because that's the one thing that honestly kind of disappointed me about the Star Tournament is their teams never really level up. They're always the exact same. Uh, so after you've done it a couple of times or a million times as we have, you kind of know exactly what they're going to go for. But you never see the flip turn coming. I honestly didn't even know that was a thing. But in the Isle of Armor, they introduced... Well, forget about that because here is the reveal of the new throwback team. We got... Best of both worlds from Pokemon Black and White. We've got Vinny, Iron Giant, and Nova. And from the Heart Gold Soul Silver playthrough, or I guess just technically Soul Silver, we've got Seaman, Man Bear Pig, and Batwank. Truly a team of culture. <laughs> so let's kick things off by bringing Vinny back out, the Scrappy. Kind of fitting since we're paired up with Piers, and he definitely likes his dark types. I guess Poison too. I don't think he really has a specialty, he just uses the Pokemon that are part of the band, as we learn from the Twilight Wings episode. Oh god, please don't kill me, please. And he chooses the Skun Tank, which might honestly be worse, because that's one Pokemon down for Pierre's. And again, I don't know why this is the first round. This feels like it should have been the finale, but I mean, I guess that saves me some trouble, because after this one, we'll probably just cut out until the ending, since I don't think we're going to be facing those two special trainers just yet. Uh, but definitely check that out if you missed it. I uploaded a breakdown of that new Twilight Wings episode, which basically covers the Galarian Star Tournament, as well as just the two DLCs, the Crown Tundra and Isle of Armor. So it was really cool. If you don't know about Twilight Wings yet, very good series, anime, limited edition or just limited run, because there's only seven episodes, and now eight technically, I guess, with the Twilight Expansion Pass one. My dude Iron Giant is learning the Dynamic Punch, which has 50 accuracy. I mean, 
I know he can get no guard as one of his abilities, but because we've got Iron Fist, nah, we're not risking that 50-50. Would have been kind of funny though. Lay it all on the luck, basically. Really test if I'm as lucky as I think I am, which I feel like has already been proven enough. So we're not going to leave it up to Lady Luck this time around. Uh, let's actually just keep going for our crunch. Since Leon sent out the Dragapult and the Draco Meteor is going straight for Vinny. Oh no. Yo. He's so dead. Okay. Obstagoon's going to get the revenge. Not quite because he goes for Dubwool instead. Could have totally throat chopped the Dragapult, you know. Uh, so yeah, this is a very nostalgic team. All the way back to maybe 2012? Even older than that? Because, I mean, Black and White 1, which is what half of this team is based on, actually came out 10 years ago. I looked this up on stream the other night, and I think it was September of 2010 that Pokemon Black and White were released. So it's been over 10 years since that game came out. Meaning that if you guys were watching for that long, I don't know, 10 or 12 years old at the time that came out, you're probably like 20. 22 that's how math works the point is I'm freaking old man I've been doing this for a long time and you guys have been watching for a long time as well or at least a lot of you from the comments in the last episode I asked how long you've been watching the munch how long have you been watching me get crushed in Pokemon battles like this as the man bear pig will fall and Obstagoon doesn't even get the counter that is so sad I actually went for Earthquake anyway, which would have hit both of the opponents, plus Obstagoon. So maybe not the best move there, but I mean, what else can I do? I guess we could Dynamax the Iron Giant. Not like uh, Pierre's is going to be doing that anytime soon. So F it, we're doing it right now. Get that Dream Ball Gigantamax and Iron Giant will truly live up to his name. Now that's really dating it. As in like... The reference to the movie Iron Giant. I'm sure most of you guys watching now don't even know about it, but it was a movie I'm pretty sure in my childhood I used to watch it a lot and it kind of scared me to be honest like when the giant first comes up Maybe some of you guys will remember it probably not as scary But it is a very good animated movie from back in the day and that is definitely what our Gur Gal Galbler Golurk that's that's its name. Yeah, <laughs> Totally didn't just uh, brain fart there, but Golurk, that is what he is named after. And this time, Obstagoon is going to get the counter. Yo, that is some big damage. Let's go. So both of their signature Pokemons are going to come out at the same time. And looks like Hop is going to get to be the one to Gigantamax. So I'm going to just go for... Actually, I guess I'll stick with Max Phantasm and target the Charizard. Even though I should have probably went for Inteleon since it is gonna be the one to Gigantamax, but I figured that Obstagoon with the counter uh, isn't gonna do much to Charizard, so I should deal with that. Maybe he can get one off on Inteleon. Don't really think he's gonna survive the snipe shot though. And even if he does, I don't think counter would work then because counter only works if you get hit by a physical move, right? I think Leon's Charizard might actually also just have special moves. Yep, there's the Fire Blast. And we're not even going to get to see the Snipe Shot because that is coming straight for Golur. Oh my god, I just realized. Oh wait, what? You went for Max Darkness instead? You do realize Golurk is a ground type, don't you, Hop? I'm pretty sure we would have died if he used the Hydro Snipe or whatever the, you know, Snipe Shot Dynamaxed version is called. Basically, if he'd sniped us from up on its perch, it probably would have killed Golur. But, I mean, maybe he's 500 IQ. Maybe he's thinking like three steps ahead, you know? We're out here playing Pokemon. He's playing that 4D chess. Maybe we won't get the chance because here comes the G Max Hydro Snipe. And he is totally going for the biggest target available. Come on, man. I thought you were like American Sniper out here. Or I guess British Sniper, like, the point is, you should have gone for Toxtricity. That's like, how are you going to prove your skills if you went for such a big target? Either way, what I was going to say earlier is, Toxtricity definitely got some electricity, and it's going to actually wipe out Charizard, plus do some big damage. 
onto the Inteleon. Honestly, we don't really have anything to deal with this thing, and at this point, I've already lost three Pokemon, so I don't care about the challenge anymore, okay? I've proven to you guys that I can sometimes win with just three Pokemon, and then other times, I mean, you know, goes a little bit rougher. Like in this battle, but in the end, Batwank is going to take out the Inteleon and get us another victory against the brotherly bonding butts. Maybe we'll team up with Hop again for the finale, as it looks like we've got Gordy and B up next, and no matter who's in the end, I feel like it's not going to be as epic as Leon Hop, so I'm not even a gym leader anymore or anything, but thanks to you, it seems like I'm still getting in plenty of tough battles, huh? Yeah, straighten up that posture, man. Actually, let me straighten up a little bit. I'm always slouching in my chair. Let's use our rock solid moves to crush the willpower of any opponent. That's an encouraging sentiment. Let's take the fight to them, Gordy. Well, I certainly think Seaman is going to have a much better time in this battle than he did in the previous one. He does have the Psychic and also water moves to deal with Gordy, but I guess I'll deal with B since, you know, Piers mainly uses dark Pokemon. Definitely want to get rid of those pesky fighting ones. As B actually pretty quick there with the high jump kick, dealing a lot of damage to Seaman. Don't ask me about the nicknames, okay? I was like 12 at the time. Like I was saying, this was a very, very long time ago. Maybe I wasn't 12. That might have been an exaggeration, but at least Pokemon Soul Silver. I remember I was still in high school when that came out. So maybe 2011, I was probably, I don't know, 16 or 17. And I'm 25 now. Almost 26. We got a month to go, boys. The month of December. My favorite time of year. But definitely still got big plans for November. As we wrap up the Crown Tundra, I'll probably take a small break. I mean, I'll still be putting out videos, but we're not going to start another playthrough for a little bit. Uh, I do have some in mind, though, as you guys have been suggesting in the comments and over Twitter and on stream and stuff. There's a lot of games that you want me to check out. So if there's any suggestions still, let me know in the comments because I'm trying to decide what the next series is going to be. And I do have some in mind, but I haven't made any final decisions yet. That should be starting up maybe next week, though. Like I said, I'm going to take a small break just to work on some, like, variety videos that I've been wanting to get out of the way for a while. All as I know is Seaman, like a true sailor, is knocking out all these burly men. Well, not quite. The Psychic almost took out my champ, but barely wasn't able to and I do have the choice specs on it so we can't go for the flip turn but that is actually a new move you can get only in the Isle of Armor oh he's really gonna Gigantamax I mean my champ's at like two health is that really the best plan you know I'll let her do what she wants you're probably gonna die but I'm not here to judge I guess Gun tank with the sucker punch! Why would you do that? It's not very effective. Oh god. She about to put her hips into it. The G Max cheese strike is a coming. And let's see if it goes for C Man or Yeah, it's it's C Man. That sucks. Shuckle's gonna gain some more. Attacker? What? Getting pumped! What the heck does that mean? Is it race critical hit chance or I don't actually know what G-Max Cheese Strike's secondary effect is, but very unfortunate that she went for Seaman, because he's a very slow duck and would have been able to knock out Machamp if, you know, it hadn't died first, but that does give us a chance to show off some of our other Pokemon, such as Nova, the Heatmore. That's right, I actually had a Heatmore on my team back in the day in black and white. I was able to beat the Elite Four with a freaking Heatmore. Don't ask me how, it's just, it happened somehow. And we're gonna Gigantamax it too, to get that Max Knuckle power. Get the attack phrase. I've always wondered what that is between Heatmore's legs. I mean, it sounds pretty obvious when you phrase it like that, but I'm not a Pokemon anatomy expert, okay? I just uh, call it how it is, and that is a very strange uh, well, look at how it wiggles its nose. 
Oh, the poison is gonna take out Shuckle. Nice. We also got our Max Knuckle in, even though, like I said, we don't really need the attack. But Tyranitar will be next for Mr. Gordy. And, well, Max Knuckle's probably gonna kill that, too. I think it's actually Focus Blast that that's coming from, so... This should be a very, very... What? Only 95 power, excuse me. That's weird. Isn't Focus Blast like 130 power already? So, why is the Max Knuckle actually doing less damage than the Focus Blast would? I don't know about that one, Chief. But it's still four times super effective. So, it is going to destroy the Tyranitar. Feels bad for Mr. Tuber. I don't know if you guys noticed, by the way, but my levels are not exactly the highest with this team. So, I'll take that as the excuse for why we lost three Pokemon in our first round versus Hop and Leon. I wanted to at least make it to the final match, but your teamwork was better than ours. That's right, me and Pierre's, man, we go way back. We was out here on the streets since he was nine years old. Well, looks like we made it all the way to the end. So what? Nothing to worry about. This will be a walk in the park for you and me. Yeah, just make sure not to trip. I know you got a little pep to your step. Ready or not, it's time for the final match. Here are the teams that'll be fighting for victory. Orange and Piaz versus Opal and Mustard. Oh no, not this again. Come on. <laughs> Opal, please just speed things up a little bit. Let's give this crowd some to cheer about. Man Bear Pig might be slower than I expected, but she does have the Ice Shard. <laughs> And I've just noticed how it's a man bear pig, but it's actually a female Mamoswine. You know what? I'm gonna just Dynamax right now. Let's bring back the Ice Age. Global warming? No, no, no. This is a global freezing. As Koma O will get destroyed by the Max Hailstorm. And that is actually a powered up version of Ice Fang. I know we could have actually had a better ice move. I think uh, Icicle Crash, but... You only get that from breeding, and I didn't really feel like breeding a whole new Mamoswine. This is actually the original one. Or, well, never mind. I was going to say it's actually the original one from the Soul Silver playthrough, but I never actually played those games on a real cartridge. It was all emulator. So, back in Pokemon Sun and Moon, I think, when I did the Battle Tree, I actually recreated a lot of the Pokemon to use, you know, in the Battle Tree, but they're not technically the original ones, so... Call me a cheap, dirty hacker. I don't care. I'm just here to reminisce with my boys and girls, my squad of mons from a time long ago. As both of these old geezers, last Pokemon will come out at once. And I don't actually know which one to target, I guess. Urshifu is probably more of a threat. Now that we know Mustard is the one that gets to Dynamax. I don't even think we're going to survive, though. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why is that animation so intense, though? Is it just me, or was that way more angry than anyone else? It is a pretty angry Shurshifu, though. Urshifu, I mean. Oh, gosh. I was expecting a Max Knuckle, but that's still definitely gonna knock out Man Bear Pig. And, yeah. Not the best battle so far. Again. Well, we know the hail is probably going to finish off Urshifu, so I'm gonna just Fire Blast Alcremie. Uh, let's see, Urshifu's going for the Max Knuckle, this time for realsies! And Obstagoon will take that! No problem, what the heck? Couldn't fully protect, oh! Okay, so Obstruct normally is like protect. I think it actually retaliates though, doesn't it? Or does Obstruct just block a hit? I thought there was something else to it. I don't know what would make it so special then. Unless... Well, first we gotta level up from Roasting Al Creamy. And... The Hail is gonna be the one to finish off Urshifu. So we don't even get to see if Obstagoon would've had something crazy next turn. Because of using Obstruct. I don't know, honestly, how that works. But, hey, it let it live. Even though I technically lost three of my Mons. I already said earlier, F the challenge. I'm just here for my dub, my victory, as that will be the 15th one, finally. Oh my, <laughs> winning with you is not bad. Do you think the crowd wants an encore? I wouldn't mind making an exception to my rule, 
just this once. What, you're gonna Dynamax this time? I don't think so. He probably just meant giving another battle, but there's our prize. However, there's one more thing. Seems there are some more trainers who want to pair up with you after. Well, well, well. Oh, no. Not this. Anything but this, please. If it isn't Master Orange, it seems your talents have only grown greater since we last met. I would expect no less from one whom we ourselves call a celebrity. Of course. It is I, Swordward. And I, Shieldbert. And a dandy duo of celebrities, former royalty, and so it happens, the sponsors of the Galarian Star Tournament. Just so it's clear, being a sponsor means paying a jaw-dropping sum of money. The truth is, we have both been assisting in getting this tournament off the ground for quite some time now. This is how we seek to atone for the terrible troubles we've caused for the people of Gala. And naturally, we've been participating in the tournament too, of course. Though it's hardly surprising that you did not notice us. We always lose in the first match for whatever reason! <laughs> Even the little girl is laughing, what? Okay. I wonder why they've been losing. However, it's getting to the point where I would like to at least have some victories to speak of. If all we do is lose, what was the point of using our considerable clout as sponsors to join in? They really drop the word clout in there. So, seeing as this is the situation, you and I together are sure to be able to reach new heights of glory, Master Orange. Forgive me, brother, but I must disagree. It is I who shall share the victors. Stand with Master Orange. Hmm, I see, dear brother. Mm hmm, hmm, indeed, dear brother. Well then, apologies for rudely interrupting from such an elevated position. We do enjoy elevated positions so much. We look forward to do a favorable decision regarding our proposal. And with that, farewell! All this attention may be a bit much, but please do participate again with a new partner next time. Wait, I thought we get to do one last tournament and they would be like the champions or the finalists. I know they're never going to be champions, like they were saying. They don't even make it past the first round, but... I guess we actually just get to pick one or the other as our partner. And this time, Ball Guy's gonna give us a rare candy! Where'd you pick that one up from? Hope you decide to participate again soon. Yeah, we're gonna do that right now, bro. So, there we go. We got Swordward and Shieldbert unlocked. One has Golisopod, Bisharp, the other, Bronzong, and Gigalith. Does anybody else have a Bronzong? Because. Feels kind of weird since Nessa has Galissapod too, that there's two trainers that have that Pokemon now. I mean, they both do have Surfetched, of course, that's like their signature, and the signature Pokemon of Galar, you could say. But since this is Pokemon Sword I'm playing technically, let's go with Shieldbert. You know, I'm the sword, he's the shield. And we'll head back to the locker room. How you doing, man? Well, 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 young Master Orange, it is an honor to have been chosen by you. I am terribly indebted to you for this boon. Just you wait and see, I will prove to you that I am just as capable a battler, even when not paired with my older brother. Because that is what a true celebrity does. Okay, as always, I wasn't really paying attention to the standings or the bracket, but it looks like we're taking on Leon Raihan. In the first round, oh my goodness, again, they're getting rid of the craziest match right from the start. Orange, my liege, allow me to prove my worth. Let's get it, dude. I be the sword, you be the shield. I already laid out the plan, just please follow along as we are challenged by no pushovers this time. We got Leon Raihan, number two and number three in the region rankings. Or at least that's what I would assume. Alright, use those weather tricks and make it rain cheers in the stadium! Way ahead of you. Though I'm already looking forward to taking you on. Has that actually happened? Well, I guess we did pair up with Raihan at one point. Maybe we got to go up against Leon? I don't remember anymore, but... I'm gonna kick things off with a little ice beam for Flygon. That dude needs to chill out. 
As Leon will, of course, King's Shield up. That man always goes for that. No surprise. But we're actually not even going to let Flygon set up the Sandstorm this time around. Which could definitely be a big help. Got a couple of level 69s on the team. Very fitting since Black and White and Soul Silver were probably the most meme playthroughs I've ever had. I mean, you can already tell just from the nicknames, you know. I actually don't remember where some of them came from. I think Batwank was from my British friend at the time. You know, British people love saying wanker all the time. I never really knew what that meant, but you know, he's, he's a little Batwank. Oh God, not the steel beam. Please, anything but that. Ah! Surfetch is destroyed. I don't know what that yellow was all about, but it came from the heart. Okay, I was feeling Sir Fetch's pain. I was really hoping to see it go for its Meteor Assault. That's probably like the only animation that tops Steel Beam in terms of pure spectacle, but not gonna get the chance as Leon will once again shield up. And Bronzong, the light screen, okay. Shieldbert, you're actually doing what I asked of you, bro. You are the shield, I am the sword. As he's actually gonna set up a little bit of protection for us. And Raihan will go for his Duraladon. Now, the good thing is... Well, actually, we're locked into Ice Beam because of the choice specs. Stand tall, Duraladon. Smash their hopes of winning to pieces. And that means his little inhaler will go all the way to Skyscraper size. That is a really awesome cry. You can almost hear, like, the metal scraping sound of a Skyscraper. Well, I guess the skyscrapers don't really make scraping sounds, literally. That's that's not why they're called that, but I don't know. It just sounded very metallic, and it fits with this Pokemon's design and being steel type and all that. As it's going to make its attack rise up, and Aegislash, you going for that Shadow Ball this time? That's usually what he does, right? Yep, there it is. You know, I'm convinced Leon doesn't even have a fourth attack on that thing. Ooh, Bronzong! How the heck did you just live with two health, man? That was way too close for comfort. And you know what? We haven't actually Dynamaxed our Golduck yet. I think we did Iron Giant, Heatmore, and I don't even know if we got the chance to Gigantamax on the last one. Oh, it was Mamoswine, but yeah, that didn't really end up going all too well. So this time... It'll be the Mighty Ducks coming out to play. And that'll actually give us a chance to use our other attack since we're locked into Ice Beam with the choice specs. But, I mean, I went for the Max Hailstorm anyway. Kind of late to switch it up, but... Oh, come on! Not quite going to finish it off. I mean, I guess the Hail will, though. Again, the Hail Mary as the Max Rock Ball from Duraladon is gonna actually go for Seaman. Oh no. Come on. I know Bronzong was like two health, but really? Well, I guess the hail's not gonna do what we wanted it to. And the Sacred Sword. Leon does have a final move. Wow. They really just did that though. They really just tag teamed us. That is so sad. Shieldbert, you know, definitely going for the supportive route here put an Aegislash to sleep, but I mean, we haven't actually seen Vinny in all that many battles either. Shoutouts to Big Ol' Vin, aka Super Special Trainer, an old friend of mine. I don't think he'll probably be watching this video, but in the off chance that he does, I just want to say, I love you, man. Okay, I guess Sir Aladon feels a little bit different, though. At least we survive. Well, here is our biggest fear, the Charizard. And I've actually decided to go for Man Bear Pig, even though it is weak to fire moves. Which, you know, might not have been the best idea, but we do have Stone Edge on it. As long as we're faster... Uh, oh, okay! He went for the Clink Clang! Okay, now all we need to do is not miss. Please don't tell me I jinxed it. Oh, yes! Man Bear Pig! The redemption arc is complete with a critical hit, too! We're going to one-shot the Charizard and wrap up the Star Tournament for this episode. Because, let's be real, Leon Raihan were definitely the toughest challenge we were going to see in this whole tournament. 
bracket. We got Milo Piers up next, and then Clara and Mustard most likely, unless Opal and Bead make it to the end. I'm all a flutter with delight at being able to share such a victory with you, young master. It seems it was worth all the training we put in as we toured the region, apologizing for our celebrity scale misdeeds. I don't even remember what these guys did at this point. Wait, what? Is he actually about to die? What? Gigantamax? Has Gigantamax obstacle and been hidden in the game this whole time? Of course not. I don't know why I expected that. Freaking Pierre's had me all hyped up for nothing. The final round is all that awaits us now. Our victory's practically assured. Fate has made us a sweet promise, and she surely will not betray us now. It will pain my heart slightly to seize a victory such as none my older brother shall ever grasp, yet a true celebrity never lets such feelings show. Oh, ho, 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 ho. he has no idea though. I'm actually quite surprised to see Opal and Bead made it to the end though. I mean, I guess Opal's made it to the finals a couple times now, but still, they had to beat Mustard to get here. With our celebrity powers combined, we will create Captain Clout! Oh no, I misclicked! Ah, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Shieldbert! My hand slipped! Clink Clang has levitate, right? Right? Uh, my bad, dude. I mean, I was just trying to get rid of the Mawile, obviously. Like, just had a little bit of collateral damage. This is it. The final turn. And I'm gonna leave it all up to luck. Focus Blast has a 70% accuracy. It's not quite the 50-50 of Dynamic Punch, but it does have a very high chance of missing. So it's all up to this, Shieldbert. Do we give you the dub or not? <gasps> Looks like we're not. Oh no. Poor Shieldbert. You tried so hard and got so far. But in the end, it wasn't meant to be. Too bad about this time, but you still get a participation reward. Oh, the consolation prize. Honestly, that was a bit anticlimactic. I was hoping to see Shieldbert cry at least. How magnificent, seizing victory even while towing my humble self. You deserve to be crowned global champion of the year. That was still anticlimactic, bro. Here's something to commemorate your victory. 95,000 poke dollars. And ball guy running at us one last time. I'm feeling bowled over. Or is it bowled over? Bowled sounds like his bowels are spilling out of him or something. That's kind of gross, ball guy. And for becoming the ultimate gaming god, celebrity, clout pocket master, we get Two whole nuggets blowing my mind right now, Bald Guy. Anyway, that is going to do it. That is the final thing that we can do here in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Aside from completing the Crown Tundra decks and I guess Shiny Hunting and Dynamax Adventures, which I might be doing on my Twitch channel, so definitely go follow that. I believe we've done absolutely everything there is to do in this game and its DLCs. Hope you guys enjoyed the series though. And stay tuned for my review of the Crown Tundra and just Pokemon Sword and Shield overall, as well as many more videos discussing the future of the Pokemon games. And once again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.